have with us <coughs> Mr. Domenda Pradeep Pereira from United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health. And he's going to talk about the operational flood early warning system, its benefits, challenges, and prospects. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am Duminda Pereira from United Nations University. Uh, today, my topic is about uh, operational flood forecasting systems. As you may know, in these days, uh, even in this conference, uh, one of the major topic is early warning systems. Uh, there are different kind of early warning systems, but among them, flood forecasting system is the major or the most common uh, fl flood early warning systems. Uh, in the, this study, I try to identify what are the real impacts of uh, operational flood early warning systems. And uh, Okay, so let's uh, check the statistics of uh, last year uh, disasters. You can see uh, clearly that uh, among different kind of disasters, uh, still. Uh, floods come the number one because uh, it is very common and very uh, distributed all over the world. And uh, if we concern the deaths, it's only 24%, but affected people, it's 50%. So what, why this difference? I think one of the main reasons is flood early warning systems because they try to s save a lot of lives. And uh, if we think about the trends of disasters in the past uh, uh, 20 years, we can see uh, there is a big trend in uh, increase in the economical damages but decrease in casualties. And if we check the distribution of different um, uh, geographical locations, uh, still we can see the Asian uh, region is the most uh, impacted uh, region for the, uh, among the floods. And uh, uh, in the flood mitigation, there are different uh, kind of flood mitigation measure, measures. One are the structural measures and other one is uh, non-structural measures. And uh, flood early warning system is the top of the non-structural measures uh, very common in uh, uh, in flood uh, protection. And in my study, I used uh, uh, online uh, survey because I want to see the global picture of uh, present-day flood early warning systems. Then uh, I develop uh, online uh, global survey and distributed among uh, all the countries uh, who are having uh, operational flood forecasting systems. And uh, in the uh, in the survey, uh, I covered all the components uh, defined by UNISTR. In UNISTR definition, uh, there are several components of uh, flood early warning system, starting from risk knowledge, monitoring, forecasting, dissemination of warnings, and response capacities. Not of only that, uh, I, I check what is the uh, wha wha what the kind of uh, in investments and benefits and challenges are in different parts of the world in the flood forecasting systems. And actually my question is very long. It had uh, 86 questions to fill. So because of that, I got very limited number of uh, responses because it's very tiring process for some, per some persons to fill uh, this kind of long question. Yeah? But without uh, doing this one, I, could, I have no way to get uh, collect data because I cannot travel each and every country and visit each and every flood forecasting center. Uh, but that is one of the limitations in my study and one of the challenges as well. And uh, here the brief summary of how my online uh, question I survey formed. There are different questions under different categories. I try to uh, cover all the picture of uh, flood early warning systems. And uh, for the basic uh, understanding of the flood early warning systems, I categorize uh, different systems under basic systems, moderate systems, and advanced systems. Because in different countries, uh, depend on their resources, technology, and uh, financial capacity, they have used different kind of systems. <coughs> so in the basic systems, everything is basic and fundamental, like they do the manual uh, data collection, manual uh, transporting and transferring the data and uh, just very primary predictions and intermediate uh, uh, systems have uh, in between state of, of the arts and uh, basic systems so I think I have not much time to explain and uh, my primary 
uh, understanding from the question is this is a distribution of uh, different kind of uh, flood door learning systems. Actually, uh, I think I sent more than 500 uh, requests for different uh, flood forecasting centers, but I got only 52 res full responses. And then based on those full responses, I think it's nearly <coughs> 30, uh, sorry, 41 percent use advanced systems, and uh, intermediate is 39, and basics is nearly 20. And if I show the distribution of uh, responses I got and the uh, distribution of different types of flood early warning systems, uh, this is the kind of distribution. Still, I I can see that in Asian region, uh, regardless of the developed or developing countries, they have. Uh, good, uh, I mean, uh, state-of-the-art systems because of their vulnerability or the risk is very high. <coughs> so because of different donors and uh, projects, they got uh, uh, good systems to uh, for their uh, flood uh, basins. And uh, <coughs> in the risk knowledge, uh, how much, th what is the community under risk? Uh, in that case, I think uh, sorry. Uh, nearly 55% of the responses says their risk community is between 100,000 to 1 million. <coughs> and uh, and other thing is like, what is the kind of floods? Because there are different kinds of floods they face. And among them, fluvial floods and the flash floods, they are the major kind of floods they are facing. <coughs> and uh, monitoring systems, in the mo uh, different kind of monitoring systems are studies and I think in that case it is the responses are very advanced and satisfactory because most of the sorry, uh, most of the cases they have uh, nearly 50 percent automated systems even though their distribution uh, I think uh, mo most common type of uh, monitoring are rainfall gauges and very limited for the discharge gauges <coughs> and uh, uh, in the flood monitoring I think uh, still uh, uh, nearly 70 percent are using ground-based observation, the basic uh, ways, even though th today we talk about drones and CCTV cameras and high techs, but still nearly 70% are still depend on the ground, ground observations. <coughs> and the forecasting, and the, in the forecasting, I think uh, different models are using, I think among them, uh, uh, most of the models are object-based, object that means that forecasting centers, they develop their own systems. They, they are like physically based model, data driven models and different kind of models. And, uh, and their main forecast is about inundation. I think they produce inundation maps from the forecasting and distribution. <coughs> and burning dissemination, uh, I think uh, it's a very uh, variety of uh, uh, methods they use for the distribution of their warnings. Among them, uh, most common one is 20% is the website, their website, but the problem is like uh, like vulnerable communities like uh, like senior people and children, are they able to use the website? So then that is one of the question I have and I want to study more. Uh, and <coughs> again, uh, this is also kind of shocking be because availability of flood uh, early warning maps in the centers, I think only 70% uh, of the centers have flood, uh, flood hazard maps for themselves. And 33% uh, said no, they don't have. So that is one of the uh, places we should uh, pay more attention in future. <coughs> and community responses also a little bit shocking because uh, uh, I have one question asking like, <coughs> are the flood hazard maps distributed to local communities under flood risk? Then uh, like 30, 30 say yes and no, and 39 say they don't know. So it is kind of thing uh, very shocking because uh, at least uh, they know, yes or no, it's understandable, but they say they don't know. So that is a kind of thing we should uh, pay more attention in future. And uh, my one of the question is based on past experience, what percentage of people respond to the flood early warning system? Here also 30%, they said no information about that one. So that means there is no any kind of evaluation for the flood forecasting systems. Most of the places, they just do their job and they collect data and they issue warnings that they, they, nobody knows what is happening. So I think these things should be changed. 
and uh, when I check the investments, I think most of the investment for the flood forecasting systems are coming from central governments and then uh, international donors and most of the flood forecasting system, they are project based, like international donors. But the problem with this kind of project is after five years or some kind of time, they are abundance. So no, no any follow up, so no continuity. That is one of the problem and it is waste of resources because without having continuity, we cannot keep this all the, I mean, the, uh, keep the downstream people uh, safe for forever. Like, and uh, benefits, this question also, I ask, uh, what are the benefits of having your flood forecasting system? That one also, <coughs> so 56% responded, they don't know. So then what is the point of having flood forecasting system and what is working on them if they don't know what is their benefit to the people? So, and then uh, uh, through literature and having face-to-face uh, -face discussions, I identified that at least uh, these are the kind of uh, responses I received from some of the centers like they, because of flood forecasting system, they feel secure and their life, quality of life improved and they, they were able to invest more money, more, more, more money to their properties so that they improve their properties because they feel safe and uh, <coughs> their property values also increase. Those are the kind of uh, benefits I heard from these responses. And uh, about the challenges and prospects, I think challenges are very common, like technical challenges. They, their main complaint is they don't have advanced technology and especially for the monitoring and flood forecasting models. They have lack of uh, manpower and the uh, instruments. And financial challenge is how to maintain the systems. So they don't have enough money to maintain and uh, keep on uh, running these systems for long term. And institutional challenge, social challenge is main social challenge comes with the people. Because some places the acceptance rate is very low. Because it depends on the credibility of the system and their warning. So those are, and, but luckily there are uh, new te advanced technologies are coming up. In, even in the Sendai framework they have target G, G especially for the early warning systems. So and advanced computer, computing and better communication and these kind of things. I hope in future flood forecasting system will be better, but still there are so many questions behind uh, to address and uh, solve. Thank you very much.